Each year in Australia, there's as much as 230,000 hectares planted to faba and broad beans, accounting for 10 to 15 per cent of the annual pulse crop. In Australia, faba beans are a relatively new crop. In the first crop was grown in, in 1980. We're now the largest exporter in the world. Sam Catt is an Adelaide University PhD student and breeder in the Faber Bean Breeding Program. The University of Adelaide has taken a, a lead in the, in the breeding program since the start, since the early 80s, um, with investment from GRDC. We're largely focused on yield. That's, our, that's always our number one. Also disease resistance is a, is a big one for us and also we're looking at herbicide tolerance traits and seed quality is really important for us as well. At one of the main field trial sites at Strathalban, southeast of Adelaide, Sam is checking the flowering times of different faba bean varieties. The latest phase of the National Faba Bean Breeding Program began in 2016 and there's been a number of variety releases. In the south, we've released Marne, which was a bit more focused towards the drier marginal areas. And we also had Bendop, which was our first Group B immunosolinone tolerant variety, for the, again, for the southern region. Uh, since then, we released PBA Amberley. That uh, was a big step forward with, uh, with yield, but also for its disease package. It's really strong for Ascocarta and, and Chocolate Spot as well. Around 70% of the national crop is grown in the southern zone, South Australia, Western Australia, Victoria and southern New South Wales, where Ascocarta blight is one of the diseases which most impacts faba beans. Ascocarta is quite distinctive because it has um, the sort of black and white salt and pepper look to it. You can see the centre is a white or a grey lesion and then you've got black spots in the middle and those are called pycnidia. They're the fruiting bodies of the pathogen. And within the pycnidia, the spores are housed and so when rain splashes on those pycnidia and they burst open, that's how it splashes across to neighbouring leaves and, and can move around throughout the crops. Sarah Blake is a plant pathologist with the South Australian Research and Development Institute, SARDI, the research division of the Department of Primary Industries and Regions in South Australia. Her team inoculated different faba bean crosses with an ascochyta spore suspension six weeks ago. And now they're selecting the bean plants showing some resistance to the disease. What we're doing is looking at certain plants that have got the lesions. Um, we're basically breaking them to say that those are ones that will not be kept for, um, uh, for crossing later on in the program. And we're retaining all of the clean and healthy plants that uh, likely have resistance to Ascochyta. Ascochyta tends to impact plants in winter, whereas another fungal pathogen, chocolate spot, is more prevalent as the weather warms up. The northern growing region of Queensland and northern New South Wales has different disease threats. In the north, they're looking more at rust, is, is quite prevalent, but also chocolate spot for them, and they're looking at, at viruses like bean yellow mosaic virus and bean leaf roll virus. Sam says discussions with other researchers and the pulse industry reveal a deep interest in the continued breeding for disease resistance and herbicide tolerant traits. And there are a couple of new varieties on the market, including FBA Ayla. Yeah, we've had some, some really good progress recently. We've got some, some lines that are on the verge of, of release, pending some, some more evaluation, but lines that are five to seven percent yielding above current release varieties. The basis of our whole program is, is providing improved varieties for, for growers to, to drive their profitability. Yeah.